So I bought this uh, Harbor Freight dovetail jig. And reading the reviews on it, uh, numerous people had problems setting this thing up and getting a good uh, dovetail. Now I spent maybe two hours test cutting things on here and getting it dialed in and I'll show you exactly how to dial in your dovetail jig. So I'm gonna loosen up all these guides and everything like that and I'll show you exactly step for step what I did to uh, get this dialed in. So I'm gonna undial it and so it's like it's right out of the box. Let's loosen up everything. Out of the box, this was reversed. So I unscrewed these, flipped it around so that you push down like this to tighten. But before, out of the box, it had it pushing it this way to tighten. One thing I recommend on this is using some Teflon spray, putting some on your finger, putting some on these plastic rollers here. These will move a lot easier. Silicone or Teflon spray works great and you'll notice a huge difference in the smoothness of these because before when I was cranking these down it was binding kind of. We're going to start with the horizontal block then the vertical block with these make sure your eccentric rod is all the way up tighten it down until you start feeling pressure and then back it off half a turn tighten it down until you feel tension back it off about a half a turn so mount the vertical piece in there we want to line this comb up about 5 30 seconds from the edge of this you can line it up 530 seconds from the edge of your board and then tighten down and repeat the same thing on this side tighten it down as tight as you can get it so now you have your comb set at 530 seconds from the edge. So the next thing you want to do is set the depth of your bracket frame. And it should be for, so for this three quarter inch piece of pine, I found that measuring an inch and an eighth from the back of this comb is the correct depth Next thing you want to do is adjust your stop pin right here and right here, right here and right here. The way I do this is first you put in the vertical piece of wood and clamp it in place so that your horizontal piece of wood can get lined up correctly. So what you want to do is have the edge of the wood halfway underneath the, the finger where it's going to start. And so these fingers are half inch. So you want to move your piece of wood over a quarter inch. And once you have it lined up, clamp it down. Make sure it's up against your vertical piece of wood. And remeasure. Measure twice, cut once. So after you have your horizontal piece of wood lined up halfway under a finger, Move the stop pin all the way up against the piece of wood that you just clamped down and have it sitting where you need it. And tighten down the stop pin bolt with a 12 millimeter wrench. Now that sets this side of your horizontal. So put the half inch shim right here. Put in your top horizontal piece and clamp it down and then your vertical piece can get lined up you can put in a piece of wood and push down on the comb so that it doesn't uh, move and you can get everything squared away 
Once you got this side lined up, then clamp it down and move the stop pin all the way over. And from my experience, even this is not going to line up correctly. So move this top stop pin about a 30 second, pull it out this way about 1 30 seconds of an inch. And that way your edges, because there's, depending upon your router and your, your template guide, you're gonna have some slop in that. So to line everything up, I found that you need to pull the stop pin for the vertical piece of wood stock out about a 32nd of an inch and then tighten down the bolt. Then you can rinse and repeat on the other side. Again, line it up a quarter of an inch underneath a finger. So once you have it lined up a quarter inch in between this tooth, stop pin over and tighten it down. You can take your half inch shim, put it in between the block and the horizontal piece and clamp it down. Then you can align your vertical piece and line it up on the right side this time and clamp it down. Make sure that the outside edge is square. Just like you did on the left side, you push the stop pin up against the piece of wood and pull it out about 1 30 seconds of an inch. So when you put in your horizontal piece, you want to put your vertical piece in just so it can butt up against the edge of the vertical piece. Then clamp down your horizontal pieces once you have them aligned with the front. And then for your vertical piece, you want to hold down on the comb fence and lift it all the way up and ensure that it is up against the stop pin and also all the way up against the comb. And do that for, you can either do one at a time or you can do both at the same time, but holding them can be kind of a pain. And that is pretty much the complete setup of the dovetail jig from Harbor Freight. So I've got this plunge router from Harbor Freight and to do dovetails, you need to have a template guide. And Harbor Freight does not provide you with a face plate to fit in here, which would be easy to make if I had a 3D printer for these template guides. Because it would sit in there and you'd screw this on there. So I went out and bought another router. So I bought the fixed base two horsepower uh, router from Harbor Freight. It was on, had a 20% coupon. You have to put in the quarter inch collet in this. And on this, has these little ridges right here and these are completely round so I had to sand little recesses on these template guides for it to fit in here. Harbor Freight sells these template guides and it doesn't fit their own routers so, so I had to modify this template guide for it to work. You'd think they would sell parts that are completely compatible without having to modify anything. Or a five cent plastic piece of faceplate from molded plastic for the plunge router that I already own. So now I've got the template guide seated in there. Because this shaft on this is kind of short, this is also a Harbor Freight dovetail bit, a half inch uh, 14 degree dovetail. This shank right here is kind of short, so you have to be very, very careful to ensure that you line this thing up correctly. The way I do it with this router, took me a few tries to get it right. Turn this all the way down until this collet nut hits this brass uh, fitting right here. Zero out this gauge right here to this mark here. Here's the zero mark and I turn it up two notches to get the collet nut off of the brass fitting. So I take my little uh, ruler with the square on it and set it at about 1930 seconds. The instruction says to use 2330 seconds but I tried that already and it creates too tight of a joint and you 
in, and it's not usable. So the way I do this is set your ruler or your gauge to 19 30 seconds. And tighten it down a little bit till it's snug. Pull it out a little ways and then tighten this down. Verify the depth. Spin it around, make sure nothing's grinding on it. So you have it in the ballpark where you need it. So on the outside edges, I'm going to label these one and one. And then two and two so that you know which side is which, so you don't get them mixed up. So you can uh, move the pieces and hopefully they will line up correctly. Okay, so you see here, this isn't deep enough. So we gotta move this bracket frame back maybe a sixteenth of an inch. So I've adjusted the frame bracket and I'll recut this on some clean edges. There, perfect. Remeasuring this to get a perfect depth cut here, you gotta measure an inch and three sixteenths from the back of this comb on each side to get a good clean cut. And that took me about two hours initially to set it up and do test cuts like this. This is plenty tight, I mean, I can get it out and put it back together just fine. You glue this, clamp this, let it sit overnight, and it'll be completely strong, very tight. And I've read on the Harbor Freight website where people couldn't get this thing to work, and I, uh, I don't know how they couldn't because the second time I set this up, I had all the measurements and knew exactly what I needed to do. So now you guys have the measurements. Um, the only drawback I see of this is the manual is wrong in some places. This has to be a 7 16 template guide, not a half inch. One place in the manual it'll say 7 16 and another place in the manual it'll say half inch. You gotta use a 7 16 inch uh, collar on this because a half inch won't fit in here and that's another gripe that uh, people have on the Harbor Freight uh, product review forums is they can't get a half inch collar in these half inch finger combs because the manual is incorrect in some of the areas like uh, it says 23 30 seconds from the face of the router when it's only 18 or 19 30 seconds to get a very tight fit. 23 30 seconds will make it way too tight and you'll never get your joint together. 19 30 seconds or even 18 30 seconds will fit perfectly. So now you know how to set your Harbor Freight router up with a bit. I would recommend getting a longer shank than the one that comes with this. I don't know if they make those. Might check at Lowe's or Home Depot and see if they have a, a longer shank. But this is the 
router bit set that I use, and I'm just using the half inch dovetail. So the shank length on this half inch dovetail bit is about 1.15 inches. If you can find one with a longer shank, it'll make uh, seating this bit in the call it a lot easier because this it only has like the tip of this thing sitting in there and I've actually had this come out and uh, grind into this so that's something you have to really watch is making sure your bit is completely in the call it